I swear to God, if I get brutally murdered and my story gets turned into like an ASMR mukbang makeup tutorial true crime video, I am going to haunt every last one of you, and that's a promise. Hi! Thank you so much for 500,000 subscribers. I swear to God, I'm gonna piss myself at one point. Like, I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen out of excitement. No pissing right now, though. I do wanna dive right into this video as fast as possible because I have a lot of stuff that I wanna cover, a lot of things I wanna say, and I cannot forget a single thing. If you clicked on this video, you already know what it's about. So, there's your content warning. One of the most embarrassing things about my whole internet experience is that I used to be a true crime girly. This was before I came to my senses. And this isn't a dig at all the other true crime people, true crime girlies, whatever you want to call yourself, true crime girlinas. But hopefully by the end of this video, it may change a bit of your perspective on it. Murderinos, okay? So I think my obsession with it kind of started on Tumblr, which I just recently made a video about. We talked about how Tumblr is kind of a scary place, especially because I learned a lot about true crime on there. From like a really young tween age, I would read about murderers and like true crime cases and kidnappers and just really, really awful things on the internet. And I think just naturally as humans, we want to understand more about things that we don't understand ourselves. Also, there was just a plethora of information on murderers or the horrible people committing the crimes about their personal lives and like their lives before the act. That really interested me because I was like, I want to know everything about this person. Like I want to understand why they are the way that they are. But then I kind of slipped down a darker hole, which is home to conspiracy theories. And then I went down an even like deeper hole and I realized that there are actual people who are fans of these murderers and these people who commit such crimes. <laughs> I didn't know that. Prior to that, I had no idea. But with true crime being like all the rage right now online and like one of the main forms of content and entertainment that people love to enjoy, whether they're driving to work and listening to a true crime podcast or you're turning on Netflix and watching a true crime special. I realized that people are still infatuated and dare I say in love with these murderers and people who commit these crimes. Largely made of white women. I wanna talk about this deeper. I wanna talk about the new Netflix show, Dahmer. I watched it just for this video. I want to discuss ethics. And I also wanna talk about YouTubers and podcasters who should really reevaluate if the money that they're receiving is worth the pain that they may be causing. Also, I wanna talk about the moment that I realized that I need to stop consuming true crime content. I would like to mention that today's video is sponsored. However, the money made from today's sponsor will be going to these two organizations. The first one is Black and Missing, spotlighting the Black and Missing Foundation's commitment to locating missing persons of color. And also the National Indigenous Women's Resource Center, providing national leadership to end violence against American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian women. Black Indigenous people of color are most likely to be victims of these crimes, yet somehow white creators will still find a way to benefit and exploit their stories stories for their own personal gain. Instead of buying merch from true crime podcasters or subscribing to their Patreons this month, instead, please consider donating to these organizations. And if you can't donate, please share. And thank you so much ThreadUp for sponsoring today's video. If you don't know what ThreadUp is, I've been talking about them for a while now, but ThreadUp basically allows you to thrift online, find amazing brands and pieces, all for affordable prices. Essentially, most of my closet, I have thrifted from ThreadUp. Make sure to stick around so that you can hear my exclusive promo code so you guys can save some money on ThreadUp. I do get a lot of questions on how I shop on ThreadUp because there are so many pieces available. I find that using keywords helps so incredibly much. I have a mental note of things that I I have been wanting in my closet for a long time or I'll even have Pinterest boards of just different outfits and I will look for those very specific things on ThreadUp and I have always had success. For example, I was looking specifically for a red sweater for the fall and I found this one right on ThreadUp. I really wanted hiking boots that I could wear to hike but also be cute enough that I could style and wear every day, especially in fall and winter because most of the time they're waterproof and also that I could wear to concerts and I won't get trampled in them. And even athletic pants because most of the time they're way more comfortable but they look 
just as good as normal black pants, except they're like athletic and stretchy and comfy. You can shop my personal picks in the link down below. And you can use my code Nicole for an additional 30% off your first order on ThreadUp. Thank you, ThreadUp. Thank you, ThreadUp. I'm gonna blink both the organizations that I talked about earlier on down below. Okay. Doing research on this video made me feel so weird. How is this allowed? Okay, so why the hell are people so drawn to true crime? I did some research and uh, psychologists like to say that morbid curiosity is common, which is so true. Like I talked about it from a young age. I was like, I need to know more. Like this is terrible, but I have this innate feeling that I need to know more. Also, some people say that it helps them be prepared. Personally, I really wanna take some self-defense classes because I've heard of how much confidence it brings people once they know those skills. I just don't know if listening to true crime podcasts is like the best way to prepare or be vigilant about attackers. I don't think I've ever listened to any true crime and I was like, oh yes, this definitely has prepared me. I don't know. Some people say that it helps our natural need to solve a puzzle. It gives an adrenaline rush, which I think a lot of people are actually addicted to that adrenaline rush. And uh, the storytelling is good and comforting, okay? Okay, so let's get into like the whole storytelling business, okay? Because that's what true crime does. It's storytelling. Some people's true crime storytelling is so comforting that we have makeup and murder true crime videos, ASMR true crime videos, and even mukbang true crime videos. It took some time to watch these videos so that I wasn't coming in blindly talking about something that I didn't watch myself. I don't wanna yuck some other's yum, but I don't think that there's anything fucking yum about murder and people's actual death. I feel like there is a severe lack of compassion. There are these videos on the internet being produced by a lot of people because others see that it is a successful business. You can watch me eat Kane's fast food for like 40 minutes straight while I tell you about the rape and murder of like a nine-year-old girl. If you like ASMR to help you go to sleep, don't worry. You can now listen to a whole hour of someone in ASMR talking about the death of 17 men, primarily who are black, and then the cannibalism involved in all that. You can watch someone do their cut crease uh, while they talk about incest and the abuse of children. I feel like there is a huge disconnect with realizing that this has gone on too far. The lack of compassion for the victim stories, in, e even in the way in which we are telling them, to now it is a form of entertainment. I think what makes me so sick is that these people are talking about these cases while doing these things that we usually watch for entertainment, like makeup or ASMR or mukbangs. We normally watch these to like unwind and relax, and now it is a form of entertainment and can be made about you or your family because you're not excluded from them. And I think that's part of the issue is that we don't see these people as real people anymore. The victims, I mean. They are no longer real people or real life. It is just for entertainment. And unfortunately, a lot of these YouTubers would not hesitate if something bad happened to one of their subscribers and it was a juicy enough story, they too would make a video about you. Because I was watching the video and I was like, there is absolutely no way that I would be okay if a video like this was made about me or one of my friends or one of my family members. And I don't think that the people making them would, would be okay with a video like that being made about them. Imagine Googling a name of a loved one who has passed on and their obituary is not the first thing that comes up, but it is someone doing a whole mukbang, explaining all the details of their death and very personal and gruesome information that should not be shared to this many people. Cause that's what's happening most of the time. These people are not asking for permission from the family. They're not even contributing to the family. Uh, most of the time, none of the AdSense, none of the sponsor money is going to these families and the victims. It is now about the sole benefit of that creator. And we're just gonna keep seeing more and more people want to be true crime content creators because they see how well it works for everyone else. Netflix is just like a beast of its own. Let's talk about Dahmer. It was very difficult to get through. Uh, first of all, it made me absolutely sick to my stomach. I lost my appetite for days. Media does not usually affect me like that, but knowing that these were real people who went through these things made me absolutely sick. I also noticed that there was a lot of fade to black scenes Although it is a very gory and disgusting show, I kind of anticipated that Netflix would milk that to its fullest potential and like 
try to make it like a cinematic masterpiece to be as disgusting and gory as possible. So I was actually kind of surprised that they did a lot of this fade to black stuff, which apparently after reading about it, it was the respect to the families. I actually didn't know a lot about Jeffrey Dahmer going into this case, to be honest. I could appreciate how they really made an emphasis on telling the story of the victims, kind of talking about their culture, their family life. They didn't do this for every victim, but for a couple. I appreciate how they didn't tell the story from Dahmer's perspective. And apparently that was done to be intentional. It was from the victim's perspectives. But I found it very weird that by the end of the show, they really wanted to make a huge emphasis on how awful it was that in Wisconsin, there was no memorial built for all these families that they were promised and no memorial built. And um, they even like, it was a black screen and they were like, to this day, there still is no memorial made. But I don't see Netflix donating anything to any memorial being made. And I actually don't see them donating to any of the families for telling their stories. And I actually don't see them asking for permission at all because they didn't. They didn't ask for permission from any of the family to make this show. Netflix acted like they were so much better by telling the story and, and being like, what the hell? This memorial still isn't made yet. They're not doing anything. The negative effects of Dahmer, the show being released on Netflix is already being seen. First of all, there's already so many Dahmer documentaries to begin with. They're even like on Netflix and I get them recommended now. And it's like, why did we need another? Why did we need another? Everywhere I go, Facebook specifically, so many Dahmer memes and Dahmer TikToks like making jokes out of the lives lost and like the things that Jeffrey Dahmer did. Although it's Evan Peters, the actor's voice and not Jeffrey Dahmer's voice, but it is, you know, it's supposed to be him. Uh, there's TikTok sounds. I could not imagine being one of the victim's families and going onto TikTok and there are trending sounds of some of the last words that were spoken to their loved ones. Now it's like, it's a trending sound and it's like, it's a thing. That has to feel extremely jarring. I found out that some of the victim's family members actually posted after Dahmer came out and have talked about how it has only re-traumatized them, especially after reenacting very specific courtroom scenes. They have had to watch those scenes get recreated time and time and time again every couple years. The show did not help any of the families or ask for permission. So why the hell was the show made? Because it just seems like it has done more harm than any good, honestly. But Nicole, it's to raise awareness. No the hell it's not, and you know that it is for entertainment purposes. Raise awareness for what? Raise awareness genuinely for what? Why are shows and stories like this told over and over and over again in a drama-like way, or in a podcast format, or in a video format? Why is it being retold time and time again? Awareness for what? Because most of the time there is no awareness being brought to the victims or their families in a positive way. No charities that you can donate to. So what kind of awareness is it? The awareness in question is, I just want to know in grotesque, gruesome detail, what Jeffrey Dahmer or other horrible people like him have done to their victims in their last moments. And I wanna see it in an entertaining way. And I wanna see it done by a conventionally attractive actor, cough, cough, Evan Peters, cough, cough, Zac Efron. Because to me, it is trauma porn. Last year, 2021, there was a woman named Gabby Petito who went missing. She was doing van life with her fiance and he ended up murdering her. And during this whole search for her body, there were spiritual people who would come onto TikTok and say that they saw a vision or they pulled a tarot card saying that uh, Gabby Petito is actually in this state. Gabby Petito hit her head. Gabby Petito drowned. I see Gabby Petito in a big body of water. His energy does not feel like a killer. I do feel that he was working on himself. Plenty of people hopping onto TikTok being like, hey guys, today's day seven of looking for Gabby Petito. Here's the tea for today. As if this isn't a real person who is missing. As if this isn't a real person who is dead. It was so sick what I saw being done to this true crime case happening in live time where people were treating it like it was like an episode of The Bachelor. Like it's like, okay, everybody contribute. Okay, everyone give your thoughts. Okay, just live tweet about it all. And if it happened to someone that you knew, 
you wouldn't like it. Not to mention, I am really not a fan of how some of these people kind of brand themselves. You can buy jewelry and tapestries and t-shirts with your favorite murderer on them or podcasts called like my favorite murder and then you can get hoodies and it says my favorite murder on it you can be a murderino and then you can get a shirt and says stay sexy don't get killed or you can get like a mug that's like called full body chills because that's kind of like your catchphrase when you hear about how someone's getting murdered oh Quirky. And while I was preparing for this video and I was looking for organizations to donate to, I was having such a hard time finding actual organizations that you can donate to that talk about true crime or maybe some true crime podcast pages have something linked. Because if you try and Google, the entire Google page is flooded with true crime podcasts asking for donations to their Patreon rather than actual donations being given to victim. I like, I, what the fuck? Every true crime podcast website has a Patreon donation page, but donation to the victims and their families, I don't, I don't know about that. It should not have been that difficult to find. I know I just spent the whole video very upset and angry, but I give credit and props to some of the other people who are talking about, you know, their opinions on true crime and that they were able to say it in a much more eloquent and nicer way than I could have. But I'm very passionate about this and it really upsets me. And I also kind of want to talk about the dangers of getting into true crime content, especially as someone who is, ooh, I'm mentally ill. It is not uncommon to experience some sort of mental effects after consuming a lot of true crime content or even just a little. I personally did not see how fucked up what I was listening to and how desensitized I was to it and how it may be affecting my brain until I was a bit older, which is kind of what I fear because I know that there's a lot of young people on the internet and I know I have a lot of young viewers and listeners and I fucking care. I did not realize the content that I was consuming how damaging it could be until I realized that the stories of these, specifically women, because those stories touch me a bit more and that's a lot of times what it's about. I didn't realize that one day it could be me. Not in the sense like, oh my God, one day something like this could happen to me, but in the sense that one day someone could be disrespecting and making content about me in this way if something were to happen to me because people will be quick to monetize on it if the story is juicy enough. It should not have to happen to you or someone that you know to realize just how harmful true crime content actually can be. Being desensitized is not a cute or quirky thing. I saw a lot of people after they watched Dahmer, they were like, oh, yeah, some people were like gagging and like couldn't finish Dahmer. Meanwhile, like I had no problem finishing it and I was eating salsa while watching it. I loved it, it wasn't gory enough for me. Once again, these are real people. Second of all, desensitization is such a real thing. Especially those of us who have been on the internet and have seen a thing or two have become extremely desensitized and that can be severely harmful. Since we are surrounded with true crime and content that can really spike our anxiety 24 seven with having social media and having Twitter and news being everywhere, much more than any of our older family members ever had in their lifetime, it can be a lot and it can be very, very much so anxiety inducing. I watched a lot of true crime after I had a scary event that happened to me and I thought that I was doing good for myself because the feeling of this anxiety was almost like comforting to me because I was kind of accustomed and used to it. And in turn, it just made me more of a paranoid person. My anxiety skyrocketed. I had constant, very, very, very vivid night terrors about these specific things that I was watching or listening to. And just even how I went about my daily life, it's, it's gotten pretty bad. Once I kind of made a conscious effort, once I realized that this is not content that's good for my noggin, and when I realized I am way better without it, all of those symptoms have gotten much better. And even watching shows like Dahmer or some of the true crime videos that I did to prepare for this video, I had to take breaks and I could only watch short snippets because it was already starting to affect me again. So yes, please remember 
desensitization is not a good thing. We want to be vigilant. We want to stay aware and we don't want to be desensitized to these awful things happening to others. If you are a fan of true crime, I guess I would say, I can't tell you to stop watching it altogether. Obviously you consume the content that you enjoy, but please be aware of some of the things that I brought up and who these stories are about. I think there are definitely ways to do true crime in a way that's respectful and honorable to the victims and their families. I know there are YouTubers who apparently does a really great job at telling some of these stories and works with the families and gives voices to them. I know that there's documentaries and I'm sure podcasts and other videos that do not glamorize the person who did the crime or these actions or et cetera, et cetera. And unfortunately, I am not the best person to recommend anything because I don't really consume any of it anymore. But you'd also consume like stuff that's fiction, like fiction books or shows. No one's gonna do that. Anyway, <laughs> by any chance that there is someone out there who makes true crime content that happens to be watching this video and maybe think to themselves, damn, this girl roasted the hell out of me. I just hope that maybe you consider reconsider the kind of content that you are making um, and how you're going about it. And it's necessary. I definitely missed out on things that I could have said in this video. There's just so much to say and so much on my mind. And maybe one day there will be a part two to some of this, but for now, this is all I got to say. Thanks so much Thought up for sponsoring today's video. You can drop my pics in the link down below and you can use code Nicole Raffi for 30% off your first order. Make sure to support the two organizations that I listed down in the description and donate if you can. Once again, it's Black and Missing and also the National Indigenous Women's Resource Center. If you like this video, please make sure they leave it a like because it helps me out so much. Also leave a comment whatever you want. <laughs> make sure that you subscribe if you wanna be nasty. If not, you're disgusting. Also make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross. If you wanna follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you wanna follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty. I'm gonna go now and just remember, stay sexy and don't get murdered. Okay, bye.